Well, this is exciting. Uh, my next guest is uh, truly one of the few legends in the motion picture business uh, who agreed to be on this program. <laughs> Some of his classic films include the story of G.I. Joe, The Night of the Hunter, Cape Fear, and scores of others. On October 15th, he can be seen on another network, of course, on another network, in a film called Promises to Keep. Please welcome Robert Mitchum. Robert Lowry. Nice to see you. Good to have you. Come on over here. Come on over here. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. You look terrific. Everybody well, for in, asking me. in the office has been very excited about your appearance here tonight. Is yeah. everything all right? You feel all right? Yeah. <laughs> worse. Actually worse. What's the matter? Nothing. I just, you know, people used to ask Groucho Marx, uh, how are you? And he'd say yeah. worse, and everybody laughed. Yeah. You know, so. so you're I just say, looking for a laugh? No, no, not really, but I... I you feel I, all right, though. I remember uh, a friend, Lex Barker, who played Tarzan for six years, right? Mm -hmm. Tarzan for six years. He was in... <laughs> a relative. And he was in Europe, and he came back, and he had a date for lunch on the 52nd Street, and he'd gone through a complete physical, and he met his friend on 52nd Street. And the guy said, how are you? And he said, absolutely great. Cream of the crop, top of the bottle, you know, A number one, blue ribbon, and dropped dead right there on the side. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so what's it going to get you? What can I tell you? Yeah. Worse is better. You mentioned, uh, <laughs> now, uh, uh, did you sleep all right last night? <sighs> to tell you the truth, no. No, you don't, you don't I, sleep I well. think that there's a bomb disposal site next to the hotel. <laughs> uh, they, stopped, they stopped riveting at 11 o'clock, and after that, they started dropping boxcars off the tops of buildings. I don't know what it was, but the most horrendous noise. I slept better during the tent, offen tent uh -huh. offensive but, uh, in, in, in Saigon. You, you, uh, you don't sleep well historically, no, do you? Yes, I do, yes. I, I, I treasure sleep, and I try for it. But I find it very difficult to come by. Yeah, I need a lot of uh, tender, loving care. What now? We were talking. The, <laughs> we were talking this. <laughs> Thanks. Then you you said one time uh, you went uh, you slept ten minutes in a year. No, I slept four hours. To well, I I had one period when I slept a total of four hours. I used to go to work oh, for three days with fifteen minutes sleep. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was. That's true. That's true. I was building airplanes. I'll give you an idea of what's wrong with that business. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was working at Lockheed, and I was working the graveyard shift, and I worked from midnight till morning, and uh, running a punch press and running a shaper. And uh, Jim Doherty, who was married at that time to yeah. a girl named Norma Jean Baker, was my shaper partner, who later became Marilyn Monroe. And... Uh, uh, finally, you know, I, I, I actually I went blind. I just couldn't see. And uh, they shipped me off to the doctor, and they put me through a physician's and surgeon's hospital. And I went back to the doctor, and he said, uh, Bobby, I'm very sorry to have to report to you. And I just collapsed on the chair, and he said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And I argued. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute, you'll go blind from nothing wrong. And he said, well, the reason you don't sleep is because uh, you hate your job, and you know the minute you wake up, you have to go to work. Absolutely. So you got that lick, yeah. you just don't sleep. Makes don't perfect sleep. sense. Right, yeah. right. And it was uh, shortly so thereafter you... Became a movie actress. Yeah. That's it. I just put the, yeah. hung up my tools and went out and knocked on the door and started riding horses for Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, William Boyd. Now, this is a... Uh, I was reading about him this afternoon. You, you were... How did this man die? He just kind of... Uh, I don't know. You he, mentioned Lex Barker and... Uh, I don't know. Bill just uh, sort of uh, died from rich, I think. But he didn't... <laughs> did, he was Hopalong Cassidy and then he just disappeared didn't he well he was the i believe the first one who saw the uh the, you know over the horizon the beginning of television and he acquired all the hopalong cassidy's for television mm -hmm. which you know was quite something because they went on and on and on and he owned them and he just sat back and got fat and rich and died you know like <laughs> people do <laughs> uh and, and tell me about the um working with john wayne well Duke and I had always had a thing, you know, he had always proposed. We had had one miss at one time. So he had always said that, you know, one day we're going to work together. So I was living in Maryland, and uh, my secretary called me. She said, what about a, a, a Western with Howard Hawks and Duke Wayne? And I said, that sounds great. 
And I was on my way to Chicago, so Howard called me in Chicago, and he said, I said, where are you going to shoot it? And he said, no, Tucson. And I said, oh, fine. I said, what's the story? He said, oh, no story, Bob, just character. <laughs> so I said, fine. And that, that was it. So I went, and we sort of redid Rio Lobo or whatever those other things were they did with Dean Martin, and I was the drunken sheriff. And uh, we're working at Tucson, old Tucson, one night. We did a lot of night work. And Duke is sitting outside of his trailer waiting for the guy to come and glue his wig on. And he said, <laughs> he said, uh, Mitch, I, he said, when are you going to let me direct you in a picture? And I said, as soon as you get your bottom in on the set, Duke, that's all you ever do. He said, yeah. Yeah, move over, say it like this, do that, you know. So that was it. We got along fine, really. Yeah. I yeah. loved him. Did, uh, did you guys ever get in trouble? Go out no. to no. tasting? No. Well... <laughs> No, we went up to the uh, club up on top of the hill outside of Tucson, and one night Duke fell like a tree like that and wiped out the whole, that whole side of the bar like Domino. <laughs> <laughs> he would do that. Uh, I want to I ask you else, uh, something else about drinking, but we'll do a commercial here and then we'll come back. Okay. Okay, we'll be back here with uh, Robert Mitchell. <laughs>